Hi, and welcome to our Intelligent Vehicle Podcast. I'm Gary Rubin. Joining me to talk about designing applications for intelligent vehicles is Joel Hoffman, an automotive strategist at Intel. Joel, welcome. Hey, it's great to be here. Let's get started. Here's the first question for you. Joel, tell me the advantages of Tizen in platform development. Well, Tizen is an entirely open source software development platform. And what it tends to do is to innovate or leverage innovation in the adjacent markets that include both the consumer and the mobile environments that bring that world into the car manufacturer space. And the car manufacturers have their own software ecosystems that want to bring today's value. So Tizen helps to do that. Now Tizen IDI is a subversion, if you will, of Tizen that's specifically designed for the automotive market. And again, here, the focus is on accelerating open innovation, lowering the cost of integration, speeding time to market of new services that an automaker might bring into their car. Now, that all sounds like a lot of stuff you put on a piece of literature, and, and it is. And the reality is what Tizen IVI is it's a starting kit. It has pre-engineered all the boring stuff that would normally go into an automotive infotainment system and allows the developers that take it from there to put something really interesting in addition to that. Now, it includes a lot of components that are very specific to the automotive environment. I'll give you a couple examples of that. There's a component called the Automotive Message Broker. It also includes a very robust, in fact, probably the most performance robust HTML5 framework. Now, these work together because what ends up happening is that you can build an application on a Tizen IBI system that uses the, if you will, programming language of HTML5 and communicates directly with the car's hardware. That's never been possible before. It's actually a huge breakthrough when you understand how challenging that has been in the past. It also includes what's called a policy manager. And this policy manager is a, is a software component. It's named Murphy, kind of interesting name. But anyway, it's used to create different application policies based on the state of the vehicle. For example, if you're driving, it allows you to do some things. If you're parked, it lets you do other things. If you can believe it, in many uh, parts of the world, TVs are built into the front seat of the car, and they can only operate when they're parked. So Murphy would be the software policy manager to prevent that TV from coming on while you're driving. It also basically provides a complete pre-integrated platform that an OEM, car OEM, or any of its suppliers, tier ones, tier twos, can just pick it up. And they can use this to reduce the time to market, to create their own services that are greater in value. And of course, in the end, the goal is to reduce the cost of development. Joel, where do you think we are in that time frame and, and spectrum with, with ties in IVI? What's new? Well, I wanted to mention that the Tizen IVI team is very sensitive to the time we're in, if you will, and builds the capabilities into the platforms, treat the process very serious, and validate the product just like any other commercial product. But the outcome of that product, of course, is available to anybody in the ecosystem for free. Now, What's notable about that is because that effort goes into it, the results can be achieved more quickly. The development on top of the work of Tizen can be really immediately brought into a product state. Now, there's a lot of new things that have been happening with Tizen IBI. Uh, Tizen IBI went through a fairly real, uh, rapid development in April. The 2.0 release was launched out there. And on a regular basis, there are, have been monthly updates to that. The 3.0 Tizen IBI will be uh, released later 
in this year. And it has some features that are very exciting to the infotainment marketplace. For example, the Wayland and the Weston, these are again two software components, graphical compositing solutions, that's a mouthful, but they together allow Titan IDI to have a much more lightweight and higher performance graphical solution. Now what that means is that traditionally in the Linux world, they use a technology called X. And X tends to be a little bit slower and not responsive. And nowadays people are expecting that their computers are going to be instantaneously responding. So by advancing Tizen to support Wayland and Weston, these two components together put Tizen really at the cutting edge. They're not lagging at all. They're actually leading the technology space here. And of course, all that helps with that HTML5 that I spoke about just a minute ago, because with HTML5, developers can write an application one time and use them on a variety of platforms. So they can be developing an application that runs on iOS, runs on an iPhone, runs on Android, runs on a QNX system, and it runs on Tizen. So these are some really I think, exciting developments that have put Tizen in the forefront. Joel, thanks for being with us today. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.